Hey guys, it's Michelle from Cozy Egg, and today is Monday, September 10th, 2018. I believe that this is episode 59. So, it has been an entire month since I recorded. Um, unfortunately, this has been the first time that Eric has been out of the house and I have not been working that I could actually record. So, um, you can probably tell from the dark circles under my eyes that um, work is not going well. I had to work this weekend. I had to be on a conference call. I had to start a conference call at 2 a.m. yesterday morning that went until noon. And then this morning, I had to be on another conference call at 7 a.m. that went until 6 p.m. And I had to keep jumping off of it to go deal with other issues. So, yeah. And for those of you um, that follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, you will know that it, it's bad enough that like my boss sent me three bottles of wine. Like FedEx showed up with a package, like a box um, with three bottles of wine in it, which was very sweet and very nice. And this is my boss that I really like. Um, tomorrow I get to meet my new boss because one can't have just one boss, one has to have three. Um, so tomorrow I get to meet the replacement for the one that quit in person for the first time. So we'll see how that goes, but she's buying me lunch. So it's worth it, I guess. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's what's going on. Um, so Please forgive me if I am a little scattered and all over the place and what have you because work sucks, like majorly, big time right now. So what have I been working on? I, I'm, I'm sort of looking around because I have like six piles of things. Um, so let's start with let's start with my three things sampler so i started this so i showed this in my last video i started this um back around the beginning of august um with tracy p and emily eclectic possessions and then i think a few other people um, were jumping in as well and Emily is just going like gangbusters on hers. I mean, she's like all the way down here. <laughs> um, and hers is turning out amazingly beautiful. I'm just, I'm loving watching her progress. Um, but of course she has, you know, inspiration because she wants to hang it in her new house. Um, so here's mine, here's how it was looking. So the last time you saw it, I think I had um, through I done. I still haven't decided what I wanna do with these flowers up here, like what color I wanna change this to because in the original, they're like pale, pale, peachy pinks. And I'm not doing that. So I figured I'd try to get some more colors in and then see what I think. But I'm really loving how this is looking. Um, I'm just sort of working on um, kind of the first page and trying to kind of get down, you know, get all this sort of filled in. So I worked more on the border. Um, and in case you don't recall, I am changing most of the colors. Some of the colors I'm keeping, so like this, um, this sort of turquoisey teal, that's called for 
um, the blue, like the lighter of the two blues is actually the darker of the two that they called for. So I went, I used that as my light and then pulled a darker. Um, and I'm doing mine with more, you know, uh, I'm gonna say jewel tones. So I pulled this kind of red, which I'm loving, um, the darker blue, which I love. Um, in these golds here, one of them is the called for, and then the other one I pulled myself. And I think the one that's called for is this one, and then maybe I pulled this one myself. So it's like every other one, but I really love the way that those golds look on there. Um, so yeah, it's coming along. I am enjoying working on it. Um, I just had other things kind of jump in and need attention, which I will show you here in a moment. But this is the Three Things Sampler by Maura Blackburn. And um, I am stitching mine with kind of a combination of um, DMC and Overdives. It actually just calls for DMC. So uh, most of the called for that I'm still using are DMC and then the others I'm pulling are um, overdyed. So like the pink that I used for the flowers and the border, that's an overdyed that I'm using and I like the variegation in it. So yeah, and I'm stitching this on um, 36 count. It's a lakeside, I think it's vintage like light exemplar because pretty much that's all I ever had. It's, you know, like all the lakeside I have, it's either vintage light or it's just vintage exemplar. That's pretty much it. So it's one of the two. I'm guessing it's light based on the color. And I'm stitching this two over two because I like the coverage. Um, one over two was just not cutting it, which I ranted about in my last video. So we won't rehash that here. Um, so I worked on that up until my birthday. And so on my birthday, oh, and the other thing I worked on. So I talked last time about anniversaries of the heart. And this is in my, um, my bag that my friend Sylvia made me. It's mesh and then it's got this um, pretty Liberty fabric. And then um, the scissor pull has a little horn book with my initial on it. Um, so I talked a little bit about Anniversaries of the Heart, which is my other magic piece for the year, which I've not touched in quite some time. Um, I did pull it out. I did actually pull threads for it, um, it for the block that I'm working on. So it calls for, these are all my sticky notes. Um, so this is the block that I'm working on, Moonlight Visitor. And as is the case with all of these, um, it calls for a ton of, um, crescent colors or classic color works or whatever we're calling it these days um, and then some gentle arts and most of the gentle arts I had the crescent colors I did not and so I actually so like it called for three crescent colors almost auburn cappuccino and tufted yellow so I just pulled threads that I thought would work instead um, Two of them, I just pulled the DMC equivalents and opted to use those. Um, one of them, which is um, Cappuccino, I ended up using, I pulled, um, I think it's Gentle Arts Grapevine. And that's what I'm using. So, because I was just like, I'm just not fooling with this anymore. I'm done, I'm done with messing around with it because I have had to buy so many threads for this because every single one of these things you know of course calls for different threads 
So, and I don't even see my grapevine in here. I wonder if that's because I changed it. No, I don't know. I don't know. Um, so anyway, I pulled this out, I pulled threads, and then I did get a start on the block. So here's how the whole thing looks right now. And I've got my light on because it's so dark in here. It's been so overcast all day and then now the sun's down. So I did turn my light on, so it's kind of blowing that out, but you get the picture. There, that's a little better. So, um, the top row is totally done. There's three rows, right? So the top row is totally done. The second row, the block I'm working on is the last block in the row. And don't ask me why I started so flipping close over on this side because I have no answer. Whatever. Um, so I'm working on the last block on this side and then all I will have left is the bottom row. So, here is, I'll show it to you back here so you can kind of see what the colors actually look like, but then let me bring it forward a little bit so you can see it. So, um, the colors that it actually called for on those greens, I was not super thrilled with. Like the ones, the gentle arts that I had, I started stitching them and I was just like, you know what? These are so pale and washed out that they look more brown than green, which I was not loving. And so I ended up pulling some different threads that show up a little more green and I like that much better. So I'm having to do a good bit of sort of manipulation of this block, which is usually when I end up sort of tossing things aside and saying, forget it, because I don't have the brain with, bandwidth to do that. Um, but I've enjoyed the little bit that I worked on this. I had some time one night that, um, that I may have actually played hooky from something I was supposed to go do. And I ended up sitting in my car listening to my favorite murder and um, stitching on this. Maybe. I will deny anything. So, I worked a little bit on anniversaries of the heart. Um, and I was just sort of like, I would work on that, you know, if I had a few minutes in the morning, and then I'd work on three things at night. So, um, then for my birthday, I had a new start. Yeah. Let me back up a second. So my three things sampler I actually have in my Alice in Wonderland bag, which is uh, which was made by the fabulous uh, Christine from Stitch All the Things. And what I wanted to show you in here is Notions bag that she sent to me. So these are these are the called for colors for that sampler. Like this crazy bright yellow, but then the rest of it's kind of all pastel-y. Yeah. So I mentioned in my last video that I did that Christmas in July swap. And one of the things that I forgot to show because it was in my project bag was these scissors that my partner sent to me. They are rainbow unicorn scissors. 
Mm -hmm. I know you want a pair. Because who doesn't need rainbow unicorn scissors? Look at those. So good. So I had to make sure that I showed you that. Um, well, I had this all out. So, okay. I think that's all I wanted to show you in here. birthday start. My friend Sylvia in Germany made me this project bag for my birthday and it is this beautiful French fabric um, that has, it's probably easier to see here, these little bird cages and flowers and it's just fab. And you can see that it is, um, it's a laminate. I have a couple other bags that she made me that are laminates. I absolutely love them because I know that no, you know, no matter what, if I spill coffee on it, this will protect my stitching. Right? Anniversaries of the heart in that mesh bag. Um, and so, and I showed you the little bird cages. So, Right here, she added a little birdcage charm. Look how cute that is. And then um, on the inside is this great fabric. And then she attached this um, wooden knitting needle gauge that you can probably tell from the shape of it came from Amsterdam. So she was there visiting for work. And so she got me this little needle gauge for my birthday. And she got me one other thing, which I will show here shortly. But I wanted to show you the project bag. So for my birthday, I decided that I wanted to start Sarah Cipher because I really wanted to start a, um, I really wanted to start, what am I even saying? I really wanted to start an Adam and Eve. And I got to thinking about, you know, I used that piece of fabric that my partner gave me in the Christmas and July swap, the dapple. I used that for my Salem Village start. And the other piece um, she gave me was Nocturne. And I thought, bet because I really wanted to do something on that fabric but I was like I bet that that Adam and Eve would look awesome I bet that that would look awesome on that nocturne fabric so here is this is a black and white you're just gonna have to deal with it um this is a picture of what the whole thing looks like. This is by the good huswife, Sarah Cipher, and um, it's an Adam and Eve, obviously. And I have been working on that pretty nonstop since I started started it, and I absolutely adore it. So this is reading a little kind of purpley gray, but it's blue. Um, yeah, it's hard to see that. But anyway, I absolutely love how it's looking on this fabric because all of the fa all of the colors are very, you know, kind of fall earth tones. And that red and those browns and the greens, I just love how they're looking. Just absolutely love it. And it, I mean, my fabric gets a little dark here. I probably should have used the other side because it doesn't get quite so dark, but I don't care. I just think it's so pretty. So this is 40 count picture, this plus Nocturne, as you can see here, because <laughs> that's where I stuck my, my label. 
Um, and I'm stitching this one over two. And I'm using a called for DMCs. And I just love it. I'm having so much fun with it. And it's small and it's not unwieldy and it's fall colors, which I really wanted right now. Um, and I'm using the called for colors so I don't have to make decisions. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to figure out what am I going to use instead of what, you know, blah, blah. So Love it. Um, and I think I said it calls for DMC, so that's what I'm using. And I am like currently on a massive Good Huswife kick. And like I want to stitch everything. I'm just <laughs> like, I think I've picked up like. 20 of her pieces that I want to stitch like right now <laughs> so we'll see um so yeah so that's what I started for my birthday um you know I like to have a birthday start but I didn't want to start something that was massive and since I had just started three things sampler I just wanted something little so I think this this was the perfect compromise. I got to use my new piece of fabric. I got to start another Adam and Eve and it's fall colors, which I am jonesing for right now. And it's small. So it like checks all the boxes. So um, that's what I've been working on. And we'll probably just continue to keep working on it until I get tired of it or until I finish it, one of the two. And um, now on, look, two days from now is going to be Dark 13 stitching. So I may go back to my um, Salem Village. I haven't totally decided. Um, but I may go back to that. So here's what that looked like. And this is on the other piece of fabric that she gave me. So the piece that Sarah Cypher's on is the same size. So neither piece are very big. This is um, 40 count dapple. And this is Salem Village by Primitive Needle. And this was originally charted in Floramel silk and I am doing kind of my own over dyed conversion and I talked last time about this week's basil um, that I'm using that's kind of a variegated green and purple and I really love how it looks so and somebody left me a comment and said that there is some sort of basil that does actually have like green and purple leaves so maybe that's why it's called basil just a thought. So um, I may work on that on the 13th and then go back to Sarah Cypher. I have not totally decided. And obviously I was a big fail for um, the summer of Salem Sal. I started it, but that's about it. So let me see if I can maybe put some of these things away. Um, okay, so that's pretty much what I have been working on stitching wise, but I have been doing some quilting. So let me show you what I've been doing with that. So I went to a quilting retreat few weeks ago I have to get to this other pile over here I went to a quilting retreat a few weeks ago and um, with some friends of mine we decided to um, go to that same 
you know, kind of day retreat place that we had been to. This time we went for three days instead of two days, which was really nice. I took the day off on Friday. I ended up working half of the day from the retreat center. Not a happy camper. Um, anyway. But we went for three days. And so I had two goals in mind while I was there. So the first thing was I wanted to finish my nightshade quilt, uh, the quilt top anyway. And so you may recall I had basically all of it put together except for that one block where I was missing the fabric for it. And um, a friend of mine rescued me, bought me a fat quarter of it, and um, I was able to finish my block. So I finished that last block, and then I was able to get my rows assembled and my quilt top put together. So it is finished. And I will insert a photo here. but because I'm not gonna be able to show you this whole thing, but um, I am just, I'm super, super thrilled with how it came out. And I just absolutely love it. And it's big, obviously. <laughs> so, I mean, this is just a small little bit of it but I'm just, I cannot be happier with it because it is just fabulous, absolutely fabulous. So, super happy with that, super happy to finally have this finished. Um, this is, you know, this has always been probably one of my favorite Tula Pink quilt lines, um, fabric lines. This is Nightshade. It's from years ago. Don't try to look for the fabric. It's out of print. Super hard to find, which is why me missing a fat quarter was a problem. But I love it. Um, and this the black and white fabric that I use the moons I just love how that turned out that is not a tula pink fabric but I love it and how it turned out so um one of these days I plan to get that custom quilted who knows when maybe when I make a million dollars or you know win the lottery and quit my job so the other goal for the weekend, um, myself and two other um, friends all had the pattern for, um, and I don't think I brought it in here. I was thinking I could show you the pattern, but I don't think I brought it in here. Anyway. The pattern for um, a, a sewing accessory bag called the Sew Together Bag by Sew Demented, S-E-W, Demented, and I will put a link for it in the show notes. Anyway, um, years ago when I went to the Houston quilt show, I bought a, the pattern and a kit of, um, it was Tula Pink Moonshine kit for that bag. And my friend Karen also had bought a kit, not at the Houston Quilt Show, but at some point, had bought a kit for um, the Sew Together bag also. And then my friend Mary had the pattern and had pulled her own fabrics. So we decided that we were all very intimidated by the pattern and we wanted to try to muddle through it together. So we thought our three-day retreat would be the perfect time to do that. So. We did it. And this is mine. It is not perfect by any means, but it is also not still flat in the bag that it came home in from Quilt Market. So, 
So let me show you all the goodies. So again, the, all the fabrics are Tula Pink Moonshine, um, which I love. I love how that looks. And so you've got your two little kind of carrying handles on here. Um, this whole thing is a big zipper. And so that was part of the challenge was there's three, four zippers in this. <laughs> one of them being this big one on the top. Um, but managed to get that in. And so let me show you. So um, there's this doe-eyed fabric that I love um, for the binding. There's this fabric on the outside, which I love. And then you can kind of see the gusset in here and the fabric used for that, also moonshine. So when you unzip this, and the zipper works, it opens up to be, I mean, a pretty, you know, significant bag. So you've got spaces that you can hold things. So I've got my deer fabric and then this butterfly swarm fabric, more of the static dot fabric like the ends, and then the this camouflage fabric. So you've got all of this space in between your pockets, and then you've got three zippered pockets. And the zippers, um, I actually picked these out, so I tried to find fun, bright colors that worked with it. And I love the red um, that matches the outside and then the brighter colors in here. So then you open up your zipper pockets and you've got room in there. And all of my pockets are lined with that star fabric. So I just, I love it. Oh, and on the inside, I don't know how well you can see this, but on the inside, you can see I've got um, that camping fabric. That's the inside of my gusset here. So even the inside of that is fun. Somewhere there's a skunk standing next to a, um, a wood stump that has a ax in it. Oh, here he is. Skunk. And then this stump of wood, you can barely see it, but it's got an ax like out of the top of it because all fabric should have, you know, axes and skunks on it. So I'm super, super thrilled, not only with how this came out, I'm actually quite impressed with myself that it all went together um, with only, you know, a couple of little snags that I had to kind of work through. Um, Mary got hers done super fast and, um, then I was able to sort of ask her questions <laughs> as I went, but it did have to go in timeout for a brief period of time. I'll just say that. Um, but I finished my quilt top, I finished my sew together bag, and this also constitutes a closet project because this has been in my closet as a kit waiting to be made since I went to Houston Quilt Market, which has been a while. So. That's done. Um, so I worked on those two things there. And then um, because I finished a quilt top, I started a quilt top. And I did not bring that in here with me, but um, I will insert a photo here. Of what the what the quilt looks like. It's another Tula Pink quilt um, because you know she's my favorite 
and that is from her Foxfield um, line of fabric. And it was a class that she did on Craftsy that I took a million years ago. And the kit has just been sitting in my stash since then. So time to get it out and start it. Um, and so then the other day I was messaging with Diana from It Is Kismet Stitches and we were talking about English paper piecing and she has an English paper piecing EPP project that she is working on and I have one as well. So we decided that we were going to um, try to spend 30 minutes a day and work on our EPP English paper piecing. So I got out my Hex on the Beach, which you guys have not seen in a while, um, but just a reminder as I throw things on the floor, this is it. So this is all out of Tula Pink, of course, saltwater fabric, and I have rows one through seven stitched or sewn. And so the first thing I did when I picked this up was I put together all of row eight and sewed all of that together. I had it all basted, but I was in the process of sewing it together. Um, I typically take this with me when I go to Quilt Guild and I try to work on it a little bit there, um, but it's a little fiddly to work on attaching the rows there. So I usually try to do basting. Um, but I had been working on um, sewing row eight together. So I got it sewed together and then I have started attaching it. So that's what you see here. This is um, how far I am and I still need to attach the other half of the row. And then I can start on row nine. So um, I'm loving this. Let me... Let me see if I have, yes. Okay, so this is basically what it's gonna look like. So I'm up here in the coral, and then it's gonna go down into kind of a, a, a light, creamy kind of green that, this, that then goes into the green and then goes into the blue. So I'm a long way away. It, I think it's like 40 rows total, and I'm on row eight, if that tells you anything. So I'm not even a quarter of, a way, of the way through. But it has been fun to get that out and work on again. So thank you, Diana, for that. Um, and bits. And I'm hoping that if I just put in like a little bit every day that I won't get burnt out on it, but I will also make some progress. And then maybe once I start releasing some progress, I'll pick it up more. So that is everything I worked on quilting wise. So I guess I need to show you some stash. enhancement. So where do I start? Let me start with this because it's right here. Oh, let me back up and show you one other thing that I sewed. So speaking of closet projects, um, which I explained in my last video, so I'm trying to work on doing some of the stuff that's been hanging around in my closet undone. Um, some projects, some repairs, some, you know, stuff that just needs to be dealt with. Some um, kits that have been in there forever and needed to be sewn. So my latest project has been, um, Eric and I bought some um, stainless steel straws. Um, I'm one of them is in the sink. But um, 
We bought a set of these on Amazon, and so it had four straights and four bent, so that I could have two of each and he could have two of each. And so I had been keeping these in my glove box of my car, but I find that more often than not, I will go in and forget like go into a restaurant or something and forget them in my car. So I've just been putting them in my purse, but Eric will probably leave his in his car. Um, but I needed something to corral them. So I made us straw bags and these are not totally done yet. I still need a little button to go on here, but um, here's mine. And so I added a little, um, cording here. I'm going to put a button here so you can just kind of, you know, wrap that around. Um, this is out of Precious Tula Pink Nest Fabric. This is actually flannel. Um, I have, I made myself a sunglasses case out of another piece from this same line. So I thought that doing um, the nest fabric for my straw bag was appropriate. So, um, it's not lined on the inside because it's flannel, so it really didn't need to be. And my straws just slip right down in there. And then I can put this in my purse and go. And so Eric's, I found this fabric at Joann's um, like a million years ago in the clearance bin. And I showed it to him and he was like, yeah, that's what I want. So this fabric is, these are like Italian, um, what they call three color cookies. And they, um, Eric's mom makes these like at Christmas time. And we scarf them up because they're so good. Um, but when I happened to see this fabric, I was like, oh my God, it's three color cookies. And so then he had to have this as his straw bag so um he picked out a button i'll just put that on there as well this one i did line completely since it um wasn't flannel so now he can be fancy too with his fancy straws so okay that was the last of my stitching sewing projects so stash enhancement um, some of this is birthday, some of this is not birthday. So um, the other thing that Sylvia gave me um, that was in my project bag that she made with the little Amsterdam uh, needle gauge, she also sent some yarn and this came from Stephen and Penelope Fine Yarns in Amsterdam. Um, there is their label. And then I understand from Sylvia that this yarn was a shop exclusive. Oh, here's their, that's probably easier to read. So, and on the back of here is a needle conversion chart also, handy dandy. And this is on a piece of cardstock, which is nice. So I understand that this yarn was a shop exclusive. God, look at those colors. Yeah. Speckles for days. Look how good that is. Love it. So this is La Bien Ame Ami, um, hand dyed in Paris. And so the colorway is uh, West Knits Goes to Paris for Stephen West. So there's the tag. And then West Knits Goes to Paris. And that's not going to focus on that. But you get the gist. But look how pretty that is. I don't even know that I deserve this. It's so pretty. And 
and this is wanting me wanting making me want to knit so bad I have been kind of missing my knitting so maybe now that it's fall again maybe I'll knit some so that was the other thing that was birthday from Sylvia and so then I have this big bag of stuff to show you. Oh, there's the pattern. This is for the Sew Together bag by Sew Demented. If you are so inclined to make your own. So, let me show you the other goodies I have. So, um, we were so, so part of the reason that we did the quilting retreat was we were celebrating my birthday and my friend Sharon's birthday. Um, and the quilting retreat kind of fell right in between the two of our birthdays. And so, Sharon gave me she works at a local needle workshop and she said that these needle minders came in and she knew I had to have it. And she was right, because how awesome is that? And she also got me these cute little scissors. And I like that they have a, um, they're super sharp and they have a, guard on them so no scissor jail needed look how awesome that is so that was from Sharon um Jana gave me this um oops I just bumped the thing um this super cute tin which I just love so I'm gonna find something fun to do with this And um, another friend of ours joined us, and she is also a Tula Pink fan. And so she made these coasters for me. She said that these are like her new favorite thing to make. So they are all Tula Pink fabric. deer face and she said um, she wanted to make sure that I was aware that not only did this have original saltwater fabric in it but it also had original birds and the bees fabric so and then on the back it had this um, tabby road fabric with the tuna cans so cute. I just love these. Love, love, love them. So, um, that was fun. Um, and while we were there, while we were there the last time, I might have purchased something for myself. So there is conveniently located a um, quilt shop right next door. Um, and so last time I was there, I purchased a couple of um, Tula Pink fat quarters because it's all Tula all the time here. Um, and these are from her, um, this is from her All Star line. I did not have any of this. So, um, upside down owls, I had to have that. And then this one, this is um, tail feathers. I just love this one too. Right. Yeah. I 
just love the colors. They're so bright and vibrant. So these are just going into my stash. I don't know what I will do with them other than hoard them, but that's enough. And then they have this one. This is from Slow and Steady which I don't have any of this fabric, so I wanted to get this. This has bunnies. So the whole line, it's called Slow and Steady. The whole line is like the tortoise and the hare. So I had to have some of that. So those I got last time. This time I got, um, Spirit animal, otherwise known as otters in space. And this is from her newest line called De La Luna, which is sort of a, what people are calling a companion to Nightshade. Um, but look at those bats. And moons and stars. Ooh, all my favorite things. So I got some of this. And then on their clearance rack, they had a whole bolt of this. This is also from Slow and Steady. Um, they had a whole bolt of this, and it was $6 a yard. And so um, myself and two other friends um, bought a yard and split it into three, so we each got a third of a yard for a couple of bucks. Well worth it. So, those were all my goodies for myself. And then, this was a gift from several of them all together. Are you ready? I don't know if you're ready. So first of all, let's just look at how this is packaged. So this is a half yard bundle of De La Luna. Like they got me the whole line. I can't even, I'm not, I mean, I don't even want to open it, honestly. <laughs> um, but you can sort of tell here, yeah, I'm not going to open it. Um, so the, um, so like on the nightshade fabric, how it had the cameos, um, or what she calls the coven print. This one has, uh, the three sisters, but they are all, um, like sugar skulls, day of the dead. Like, I can't even. And I think I know what I'm going to do with it. In fact, yeah, I'm pretty sure what I'm going to do with it. So, I think that Christine, um, Stitch All The Things, is doing the Brimfield block, uh, block of the month the EPP um, out of this fabric, that's what I think I want to do with this. Because I just love the way that quilt looks. Um, I will insert a photo here. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. So. Um, but yeah, while well, while we were there, um, so another lady was there and she commented on my nightshade quilt and um, and I was telling her I was like, you know, this fabric is you can't get it anymore. It's really super hard to find. 
um, and super expensive. And so she went out to look and then she saw like how much that fabric is going for, if you can find it. And so she's like, and we were talking about the night or the De La Luna fabric and how that's, I mean, it just came out and it's already getting hard to find, um, especially the sugar skull, you know, the ladies print. And she's like, okay, well, I just bought some. I'm just going to put it in my closet for like five years and then I can sell it and retire. Like, that's a good plan because you could probably do that. So. Um, I'm trying to sort of, as I'm talking, wrap things up a little bit. So, anyway, um, yeah, De La Luna. Um, and then I had a couple of other things. So, I, um, I bought this for myself. I went to, for World Cross Stitch Day, I went to my local needle workshop. They were having a lock-in that night, um, from like four until midnight, so... I went to that, that was super fun. I got to sit with some friends and talk and chat and I worked on my three things sampler and my, um, my needle workshop had held this for me. Um, if you are still looking for a copy of it, um, the Stitch Niche in Arlington, Texas has some. So, this is my first Hands Across the Sea. Um, designs piece and of course this is Sarah Brugier this is a limited edition um, there is a sale for this on Facebook and I just love it I'm still kicking myself for not getting those dang Ufendel sisters that now you can't find but I got this one so this was my birthday present to myself and um, Amy from Amityville stitched this and asked if I would like her chart when I was, when she was done with it. And so she very sweetly passed this on to me. And so this is Salem Sisters 3 by Plum Street Samplers. So thank you so much, Amy, for passing this along to me. I appreciate it. Um, you know I love it, and I'm happy to have this in my in my collection now. So that was from Amy, and then uh, so a few weeks ago, uh, Michelle Bendy Stitchy. Um, mentioned on her floss tube that, you know, she was like, everybody should really go and put your stitchy wish list out on Instagram. You know, just put it out there. People can look at it. People can, you know, see if they can, if they have things you may want, you know, so on and so forth. So I was like, okay, well, I pretty much do whatever Michelle tells me to do. So I'm going to do that. So I put, I think five things up on my list. Um, so one of them was the Laura Standish sampler, um, which is like the earliest known American sampler. And I love it. I've never purchased it because it only comes as a kit and that gets a little pricey. So that's why I don't have it. Um, and the only place I know of to get it is from Canada. Imagine that. But anyway, uh, so nothing against Canadians, but it's sad that only in Canada can you get it. But, um, so that was on there. I had the ES spot motif sampler, which um, my friend Mary stitched years and years and years ago. And I remember her bringing it to Guild as her, this is what I would grab in a fire quilt. I'm, a sampler and I absolutely fell in love with it and then seeing um, Lori from uh, Lori in Iowa formerly known as Corgi Cottage um, seeing her stitch it I was still in love with it and it 
like I tried to pick things that every time I see them, I want to stitch them. Like I'm reminded of how much I love them. So the ES Spot motif sampler was the second thing. Um, the third thing was also something that Lori had stitched um, called the Jacob's Ladder Sampler, and I think it's by K and V. And I just absolutely love it. Um, and then the other thing was, I mean, it's only four things. Um, the Hannah Sanderson Sampler which originally was released in like three parts in a magazine from like 1990 or something crazy that is super hard to find and every time somebody posts up their progress on that stupid sampler, everybody's like, oh, how can I get this? Oh, it's only in a magazine, blah, blah, blah. Well, they just re-released it. So it is now it has now been released by Dutch Treat Designs. Available at your local needle workshop. So, Here's how this all played out. So I posted my stitchy wish list, and I just figured I'm just gonna put these pie in the sky things up here, just because Michelle told me to. So then Michelle messages me, and she's like, hey, I have a Laura Standish stamp sampler, I'd like to send it to you. What? So, <laughs> like, you're kidding me, right? Nope. She has it, she wants to send it to me. So it arrives, and not only did she send me the Laura Sanders sampler, it's the whole kit. Like it's still in the shrink wrap. It's the whole stinking kit. So look at this pretty sampler and the whole thing is stitched reversible so that it looks exactly the same on the front as it does on the back. I don't know that mine will but that's the way it's stitched and there are instructions how to do that. Um, the kit includes the 35 count linen and it includes the DMC. So, yeah. This is America's oldest known signed sampler circa 1640 by Laura Standish, the daughter of Captain Miles Standish and his wife Barbara of Plymouth Colony, Massachusetts. So, um, what's Funny, it, so like when this arrived, not only did I, you know, cry and hyperventilate and immediately message Michelle and say she's crazy and I owe her a kidney, um, but then it took Eric and I down a very interesting genealogical dig um, looking at, you know, relatives and who, because I knew that he had, um, Plymouth relatives, but I could not remember who exactly. And so we were kind of looking at Laura and how she fit into all of that, which was fun. So that was the first thing that happened. And then, um, oh, the other thing was the magpie sampler that um, Nicole showed in one of her videos not too long ago. Like somebody posted about that magpie sampler on one of the sampler groups on Facebook. And it started out because there is a picture on Pinterest of like, you know, this much of it in somebody's hoop. And so somebody posted that photo and was like, does anybody know what sampler this is? Which sparked this huge discussion. And apparently this magpie sampler, which is beautiful by the way, and of course Carol from Sampler Farm has stitched it because she stitched everything. Um, but it's apparently another super, super hard to find one. Well, then Nicole shows up and she's like, oh, I just did this, you know, search on eBay and here it is and I won it. And I was like, dang it, like, <laughs> really? But so that magpie sampler was on there. But the reason I bring Nicole up, not that I'm super jealous about the fact that she has that magpie sampler, 
maybe. But because when she saw that I had that KMB sampler on my wish list, she, you know, tagged our friend Kim and was like, Kim, don't you have this for sale? And she did, but she had just sold on a stash unload. Darn it. But thanks, Nicole, for looking out for me on that one. I appreciated it. So close. But um, she was like, had I known you wanted it? But but that's why you got to put your stitchy wish list out there. So that happened. And then my, at the time, I did not know that that Hannah Sanderson sampler was being reproduced. And my friend Kim, who, loaned, who is the co-owner of the Stitch Niche, my local needle workshop, uh, messaged me and said, hey, that thing is being reproduced and uh, we're, we have it on order from Dutch Treat Designs. Do you want one? Yes, I do. So that's coming to me. And then the other thing that was on my list was the ES Spot Motif Sampler. So uh, Kenna, like seriously, where is my brain? McKenna sent me a note, was like, hey, I have that if you want it. Yeah, I want it. So it showed up a couple of days ago. So this is the ES Spot Motif sampler and look at how pretty that is and it's not going to focus but it's got these gorgeous reds i mean it's just just fantastic and i'll just put a photo i'll put photos of all of my wish lists here just so you can see them but you'll see the ones i'm talking about and then the KMB and the magpie and the Hannah Sanderson. So look. look at this though. I'm so excited to have this. So this is by of female worth. Um, copyright 2000. So I'm just I'm super thrilled to have these. And so here's one of the things that I've been thinking about. There's only so many hours in the day. And so I really wanna start concentrating on not only finishing up my whips, but I also wanna start thinking really seriously about the things that I absolutely love, that I have loved for years, that every time I see somebody stitching them or I see a photo of them, I go, I really want to stitch that. Those are the pieces I want to start. Those are the pieces I want to stitch. So I really want to try to start looking at what I'm going to call my bucket list stitching and trying to start some of those things and stitch some of those things to hang in my house because life's too short for bad stitching. I think that's most everything. Um, I did, however, get this in the mail today. I have not even looked at it. I was again annoyed by this business and this business and this business because Seriously. Um, and because I have been so completely annoyed by the just cross stitch issues in general lately, I'm not sure that I'm going to be all that excited about any of this. Um, although the first page here, so. This one, this Jane Austen one by the Sampler Girl, you know I love her stuff. So that's kind of cute. I'm not, I'm not doing a full flip through. If you want to see a flip through, you can look at um, Danielle's videos. But um, so I mean, I've, I've, so I found one thing in here so far 
which is great because that's one more than I normally see in any of these lately because, yeah. So, anyway, I'll look through this. I don't have super high hopes, but I'll look through it. And, um, yeah, we'll see. Whatever. Oh, the other thing. This is what happens when I uncover things in my pile. Yeah, I've already read this. I decided the other day that along with bucket list stitching and finally just stitching the things that I want to stitch um, and trying to focus on the things that I'm absolutely in love with and not just whatever's shiny, um, just to be a little more selective. But anyway, um, I haven't been reading hardly at all. I mean, there was a time not too long ago when I was reading a book a week those days are gone but I really miss reading and so at the beginning of September I saw Jessie Marie post her TBR stack and um, Michelle Bendy also posted her you know what she was gonna read and so this was in Jessie's stack and I thought you know what I really want to read the other books in this series which I have not read but it's now been so long since I read this, I'd kind of like a refresher. And also, I know this is good. I know that I love this. So I picked it up and started reading it again. And I've been trying to read even just a little bit every day. And I'm really enjoying that. And it, you know, it starts off in kind of that, you know, school's about to come back in session and so it's fall. The first time I read this, I started it like October 1st. Like this was part of my dark October starts. Um, and the same day, I think I started um, my Joan of Arc shawl that I'm knitting. So I decided to restart this. If you haven't read this, read it because it's really good. And so I'm trying to get myself back in the swing of reading again because I miss it. And I think um, somebody posted up in the um, Floss Tube Fit Club group that she's trying to spend some time reading every day because it is that's a form of self-care and taking care of, of yourself and doing something for you. And I absolutely believe that. So this is part of me taking back my life is making time to read and I also want to get my knitting out and knit some too now that it's fall and it was like 74 degrees today I'm very afraid that it, we're gonna jump back to the 90s but I'm hoping I'm hoping so I think that that's all that I have to share with you that's a lot. I mean, that was a lot of piles of stuff, but that was a month's worth of, you know, updates. So, I actually have to go and work now, which I'm unthrilled about. Um, I have to start a conference bridge at 1030 tonight, which I am not thrilled about. And then I have to be back on a conference bridge tomorrow at 630 in the morning which I am not thrilled about. So, in the interim, I am going to um, maybe have some, you know, coffee or a cup of tea, and I'm going to um, maybe do a little bit of reading, maybe do a little bit of stitching on Sarah Cipher, and, um, enjoy the house while it's quiet and I'm the only one here and um, not think about tomorrow <laughs> so 
Thank you guys so much for watching, commenting, subscribing, liking, all of that good stuff. I really, really appreciate it. And I know there's eight bazillion floss tube channels to watch and you can't watch them all. So for those of you that come to see what I'm up to and, um, and you know, check in with me, I really appreciate it. So thank you. And um, hopefully I will see you in less than a month. But um, I hope you have a good start to your fall. And happy stitching.